Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Quest for Glory 2. It's time to get some breakfast and then deal with a... with the water elemental, I believe, today. Alas, again our great city is in peril. The most feared of all elementals has been unleashed upon us. The water elemental. Tell me about it. A water elemental in the fountain of town would be the greatest of misfortunes. The whole town would die of thirst. All right, well, it's obvious we're not getting breakfast until we deal with this situation. Let's do this. Then we can come back here, give a bunch of brass cent times to that guy, and maybe, maybe, maybe get some breakfast. The things we do for delicious, delicious breakfasts, to be fair, breakfast is so good. Eggs, scrambled eggs with a little bit of cheese in them. Some bacon on a onion roll with a tiny bit of butter. Not very healthy, but still good. Maybe some like some oatmeal to go with it. With a little bit of honey in it. It's so good. All right, everyone. Well, there's the earth elemental. Uh, earth water elemental. Look at water elemental. Watery tart. There she is just dancing away. I think you've only got one day to deal with her as well. So, this is going to be tricky, and I think we have to do it this way. If we get too close to her... Oh, well, first off, we walk into Herrick's place. Hello, Herrick. How are you this morning? Might as well do our daily routine. Hello. Ah, I did not notice you come in. Did you see the water elemental outside my shop? <laughs> I did. How is that water elemental? I do not deal much with water, so I have little I can tell you other than it's out there. All right, thank you, Herrick. We'll, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of this. Okay. I'm actually going to quick save, even though we really haven't done anything. We have to wait till it kind of begins moving that direction. Go oh, God. No, 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 don't go too close, Tim. Maybe we could show off what happens if she gets us, but I have a hunch it's going to happen anyway. I don't think I... I think maybe once... I think maybe once have I ever done this without dying. But actually, it's dropping the water skin that's the most tricky part. Hey, awesome. Wait, did I say use the bellows? I meant the water skin. It's like you, dropping the water skin is the toughest part of this. You pick up the water skin that now contains the essence of the water elemental. Does that mean that we, don't, we never run out? You know, I, I never knew about that. Let's look at this really quick. Oh, that didn't work. You are carrying a leather water skin containing the essence of the water elemental. Now, I feel, still think we need our normal water skins. That was one of the reasons I picked up the fourth, because I like having at least three water skins on us. All right, well, that settles that. Now we can go ahead and get some breakfast. Maybe. Abdul Dude might still say something about how awesome we are. He's he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Make sure his zap spell is still in effect. Now I have to make up my mind what I'm going to be bringing with me soon because that's basically it for Shapir. Aside from aside now from story stuff, there are no more elementals showing up. We're all done with that. Hello, Shamin. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Let's sit down and get some breakfast, finally. Order breakfast. Shema will be with you shortly with one of her splendid meals. Thank you, Shamin. We're the hero, darn it. We need, we need, our, we need our breakfast. The Kata wish to thank you for your bravery and kindness. Please go visit Shashan, the jeweler, in the plaza of the palace today. Oh, sure. Ask about... Shashan? Jeweler? Thank you, Shema. You are, of course, most welcome, my hero. Okay, well, I guess we'll do that. Maybe the story stuff is happening then. So let's eat. Breakfast is delicious. We'll drink our morning tea. We'll stand up. And we'll have to begin taking stock of the, what we've got so far and how we're looking overall. We want to visit Ohora and see if we have any notes from that mysterious person as well. Or that group. So stat-wise, there we go. I don't, 
we really should go back out there and practice because aura is too easy now for us. So. Ugh. <laughs> it's so weird to fight and then not loot the bodies all the time. But we don't need to. Oh, speaking of loot and bodies and coins, which I was alluding to, we want to drop these brass send times probably. Um. Bigger pills. I'll want more healing and mana pills. I will want more of them for the next game. One more batch of each will, will do nicely. Though to be honest, we're going to go through maybe four pills for the end sequence of the game. Time to farm our honor. Well, let's do it. You know, I wonder if anyone played this has like done like a, a cover is the wrong word. But I wonder if they've actually taken a whatever that is whatever type of horn that is, and play this tune on the YouTube somewhere. 67. One more will do, and that's good. Nice, and our weight is now actually blue. That's awkward. Get a room. Don't do that in the middle of the street, or this is a family town. Okay, right, so where are we doing? Where, what, what, what are we doing? Where are we doing? We are going to the jeweler, so let's go do that. I think we'll visit the astrologer as well today. Give him a coin. We are again in your debt. Your name will be told in the tales of the kata as long as there are kata to tell them. Oh, thank you, Shashan. We kata tried to think of some way to say how much we were grateful. Please accept this gift of a sapphire pin. May it do you good. You take the sapphire pin and place it through your lapel. Lapel? Lapel. Jewelry of the finest gems inlaid in rings and gold and silver. Necklaces of beautiful stones. Things of beauty which will last forever. All of which I sell. Oh, tell me about your jewels. My foot. The townsperson doesn't seem to understand you. Tell me about the sapphire pin. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Get out of your town person. The pin is a token of the Kata's trust in you, O hero. And we can take a look at it right here. The Kata's gave you the sapphire pin in thanks to your service to their kind. It's also, I believe, magical and is hidden in case someone decides to try to rob me, just as a heads up. I don't think there's actually anything I need to talk to the astrologer about. I think we talked to him before about Razier. We'll talk to him about it again. We have basically have... Uh, only, what, if we count today, three days left until the caravan is here, and then we leave for Vizier. And then we probably have three videos over there, maybe four, and then we're done. Now, we're nearing the very end of the game now. Hope you guys liked it. I've had a lot of fun playing it. It's always good to get more of this in. Water rules this day, both lack of it and the surfeit of it. You should either invest heavily in wine or water wings. Oh god! No! No! Wrong! Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Sorry about that, everyone. So sorry. Tell me about Razir again. The Dark Hand is over Razir now. Its ruling planet has been missing since it passed across the dragon. And the dragon itself? The dragon is the sign of vast magical power. Hmm. Tell me about, then, the old Emir. The sign of the Emir Aris al-Din got crossed with that of the Saurus. He has been missing ever since. Well, thank you, Abu. It is my pleasure and my purpose to serve the ways of knowledge. I will give you a diner. Thank you. A thousand thank yous. It is with your support that I might continue my vital work. I think this guy was the first guy I found back when I had been playing, back when we first got this game, back in the 80s. I was I stuck to the right, figuring that would be the quickest way to find the money changer. Yep. You can see what a great idea that was. In fact, you'd never find it sticking to the right or left. You have to go into the maze to find her. All right. So with that done, let's go to the Fighters Plaza. And we'll visit the Guild Hall. It is good for Simba to watch us practice. He will need to learn soon enough. This be stuck to the door with knife. 
I think maybe you should find a better place to pass notes. You read the crumpled paper with the nearly illegible scrawl in a small torn spot. Tomorrow night is your last night. You'll be getting your final orders then. Be seeing you. I think Aura says the same thing if we ask about the note. Yeah, she does. All right. Well, we're here. We might as well fight her one more time. Let's go, Aura. Let's do this. To be fair, you're, you're not really a match for me anymore. I love her music, though, in this area. I love that the flute sound right there. Do, do, do. Oh, I shouldn't do that to him. Everyone's going to be really annoyed with you. Oh, uh, Aura, you can't even block me anymore. Oh, you can. You, you were able to. You're embarrassing me. Make me, me a liar. Just do a bunch of bunch, bunch of moves like this. That should be good enough. Yep, he smacked you. And again. Nice try, Aura. Nice try. Nice try. Oh, good hit. Good hit. The ghoulie man who tries to get you now will be sorry. And that did it for us. Okay. Well, I mean, we could go right back in there and practice some more and get these stats up, but I'm, I'm fine with where they are. Let's also save this as part 13. Okay, so now where to? We don't need anything from Isher. It's still only mid-morning. So, why don't we go to Aziza? Is there anything I need to talk to her about? We can ask her about Razir and Adavis. She might know the other mage. Let's do so. She'll want to see us, I think, tomorrow anyway. Or the day before, but I, she, it might be today. Let's knock. Welcome, Galvin. Thank you for the kindness you have shown Julinar. You are a true hero for helping her. Come and sit down and be welcome. Aw, thank you, Aziza. You are most welcome, and hello. Welcome. It is good to have a visitor who understands the proper way to enter conversation. We're mostly here just to just to uh, tell her about everything we've done and ask her about Adavis. Shall we share tea? Yes. The tea is cool, refreshing. You find yourself relaxing as you drink and listen to the sound of flowing water. Now that we have shared tea, what is it for which you have come? Let's tell about Julinar. It is wise for you to have told me that. The more information I have, the better I can judge things. We'll tell her about the water elemental and the earth elemental. And about the W's. Do you know anything about Ad Avis? Ad Avis cares only for power. It would not greatly surprise me if he were behind the darkness in Razir. When I try to use a Farsi upon the city of Razir, it is as though the city is wrapped in a web of blackness which I cannot see through. Do you have any advice? I'd rather talk about something else, sure enough. All right, well, thank you, Aziz. I have nothing, nothing else to ask. I have nothing else to ask you about. You have a good day, then. It has been a pleasure conversing with you. Perhaps we shall share tea again sometime. And it's midday. What are we doing with the rest of our day? <laughs> I should practice spells, shouldn't I? We should practice dazzle and calm and force bolt. Oh, we can practice Force Bolt, I guess. It's easier to practice them in the third game, but it's harder to recover mana. It's just, oh, God, it's going to take forever. And it's going to make this a really short video unless we begin combining all these together. Maybe we'll do that, actually, everyone. Because there's not a lot left to do. In fact, there's nothing I can think of that we have to do. We have a lot of money, right? I remembered. Hello, bonjour. Hi, guy. Sight a spell? Take your shoes off? What may I do for you? Hello, Keepon. Uh, Keepon, what do you know about Razir? Razir, I fear, is very queer. And if you do not interfere, then I think it will disappear. Do you know anything about the old Emir? The Emir Razir did disappear a year ago. 
Do you know anything about Ad Advis? If you need to know the answer, then ask another Prancer. Tell me about your glasses. Oh, those old things? I can never get them to work correctly. But then again, I've never worn them. I like to buy them. Nothing up my sleeve. Presto changeo rearrangeo. Here you go, Joe. Hope you're happy, Pappy. Thanks, keep on. No sweat, Babette. Yep. Fifteen bucks. And the only thing I believe it does is it lets you... Well, I don't know if I described it earlier, but hopefully I'll remember to do it. Why not? Why not? Okay, so now where to? Now I think everyone, I'm going to make a cut here. Because there's really nothing I'm going to do which you haven't seen before, and I'm just going to be improving my spells. I'll probably come back to watch, to show a few more battles, but you've, you've seen me do the fights so often now. What I'm getting at is I'm, I'm beginning to be self-conscious that this might not be the most exciting video to watch. Probably most of them haven't been, now that I think about it. We could talk about stuff, I guess, while I do this. While it might not be the most exciting video to watch, I should still record it anyway. Hey everyone! Alright, the real trick is I gotta think of stuff to talk about. And holy crap, I just watched that last, uh, the last, like, video here. And my goodness, no one wants to listen to me talk about how this video is boring. What the heck? What the heck? So let's get out there, we'll do some battling. What, what, what was I doing? It's been a few days, actually, since I last recorded. We have full water skins, it is midday. We need to improve our stats, our combat abilities. Let's go out there and fight, and we'll think of something to talk about while we're, while we're gonna go out and, there and do so. And I'm thinking, since this is a role-playing game... Oh god! Sorry about that. Why not talk about other role-playing games? So, this will be like how I play Grim, Grim Dawn, and I talk about other games while I play that game. And so, I was thinking... Good day, hero. Hello. That's right, we can't say hello. I was thinking that what we'll do is... We will talk about some role-playing games I played when I was younger. And some of the games I want to record, and or some D&D stuff. It's been forever since I've talked about any of that stuff. Now, as usual, I don't have a script in front of me, not even an outline. So it's, it might be all over the place, but what, what the heck. Let's see, how, let's see how much trouble we can get in when we begin talking. So, does the dragons. So it's probably come as no surprise that uh, I played D&D when I was a kid. Have a kid. I even played it through my high school years. But I started when I was, I think, in... Wow, what grade was I in? Fifth grade, I think? I remember taking the school bus into grammar school once, and a bunch of kids in the front of the bus were playing D&D, and I've never seen it before. And they were rolling dice, and there was a map of a courtyard, and there were skeletons that were attacking them. I listened in, and I thought it was amazing. And I remember going home and talk, my parents were like, what is that? What type of game is that? And they were like, well, that's probably uh, Dungeons and & Dragons. And even though my parents are religious, they had no problem with it. Uh, to, to be fair, most most people who are religious wouldn't have a problem with it either. Uh, my mom was more religious than is is more religious than some, less than others. But she herself was uh, didn't care, and so my parents bought me the red book, uh, the red the red books for the Quest for Glory series. Let's a another flame door at it. Yes. Yeah, so they got me the Red Book series, and I played it with my brothers. Again, having having three brothers made was awesome, because then I could play one character that they didn't want to play. I didn't know it was always a cleric. My brother Rob played a fire, my brother Joe always played a thief, my brother Dave always played a mage. And uh, that was, the Red Book series was normal Dungeons and Dragons, so, you know, the classes were Elf, Dwarf. Uh, if you've watched any of the Pool of Radiance series I have up here, you get an idea for how that kind of went. Actually, that's AD&D which I didn't pick up till I was in high school, I think. It was just basic Dungeons & Dragons I played for a long time. So anyway, but it, yeah, it went really well. I remember, remember playing that first adventure that was always present there, right? Where, I don't know if you guys ever remember it, but the first thing you, you fought was, let's see, it was a group of players. I don't remember why, why you were adventuring it near there, but there was a castle you could explore, like a ruin. And I remember enough of it that the, one of the first battles you did was against, like, 20 kobolds were out, were out there. 
I remember my brother Dave would always put them to sleep, and then they walk up and slit their throats. <laughs> and then after that, uh, there was a ca- carrion crawler under the, a ruined door with a pit in it, and there was some treasure in there. The castle itself had a few zombies. There was a yellow mold. There were harpies in this one room in the kitchen. There was a bed that would put you to sleep. And there was the underneath second area, which was up to the dungeon master to fill out. And oh my goodness, when I was a kid, I had no idea what I was doing. You know, it's like, put the dragon in the 30 by 30 foot room. <laughs> Just stuff like that, and so on. You know, now, nowadays, I would not, if I was going to do something like that, I would make sure that if there was a reason for the creature to be in there. I remember, though, that the, uh, the second time I ran my brothers through that area, the dragon was actually an illusion. And they swung at it, and they hit a trap that was in the center of the, of the area. Yeah, but that, anyway, that was the, the first thing of these stuff. Then uh, my parents grabbed me the blue book, the green book. When I was older, I bought myself the black book, and the gold book was the last one. Never, never got that far. Uh, me and my brothers, when we played it, we kind of petered out around level 9. Oh, right! And when it came to spells, uh, especially, I didn't quite understand. I don't remember if there were any examples in the books. But I thought, okay, so if you've ever played D&D before, when you level up, uh, there's a chart, and it tells you how much better you get. And when it comes to spell casting, it lists numbers by the spells. I didn't realize that that was the spell totals. I thought that was your new additional spells you added to your maximum. So my, like, the level 5 mage had, like, 12 first level spells, <laughs> 6 Six or seven second level, and three or so third level spells. It was pretty hilarious looking back at it now. But oh man, was it ever fun. We, we didn't care as kids. We were all having a blast. Right, so later on... Oh, no, I don't want to get stung. Uh, my brother Dave had worked on a... No, not stinging me. Had worked on a world over the... Stop that! Sweet, you just want to kill me. He worked on the world all over the summer. He designed, like, the continents. He had different uh, gods in it that weren't in the normal games. Oh, well, okay, so hold on. There's a bunch of stuff that happened first before I get to that part. So I, what I mean is that... Um, so I played mostly D&D with just my, my brothers, actually, all through... Yeah, all through grammar school and even high school. At the end of high school, I began playing it once or twice at, at high school itself. I remember me and two others were... Tamed is the wrong word, but we're all waiting in human resources. Uh, two other high school kids. And uh, we were bored. So I was like, hey, you know what? Like, if you guys want, we can play D&D. And none of them had ever played it before. I forget what her name was. Danielle, I think, was one of them. Or Dinah. And uh, the other gentleman's name was Josh, I think. I ha- go upstairs and get my yearbook. I can take a look at, at who had played it again. Uh, we can search the bodies again. Search the body. Might as well get more treasure. And it was great, you know, I just winged the whole thing. It was them, uh, both of them. One was a thief, one was a f- mage sneaking into... No, a fighter. Sneaking into a orc place. We didn't have any of the rules, we didn't have any pens and paper, but I just roleplayed it. And it was great, they had a blast! I mean, they were like, I've never, I never realized D&D was, could be this awesome. And I had, I had a great deal of fun. Growing up, I played all sorts of different stuff. I, uh, when it came to Dungeons and Dragons, I collected all sorts of the, of the books. Drink healing potion? Drink... Water. Or some other, um, so I had the Dragonlance book for its world, and I really liked that world. That was that world had different gods. It wasn't just a cleric and you just picked up first level spells from everything. The gods grant you different um, different perks, as it were. Like your healing was a little better depending upon which god you follow. I don't remember the gods of Dragonlance uh, any longer whatsoever, unfortunately. Um, I don't. Wow, holy crap! I can't believe I don't remember any of them. But I don't remember any of them whatsoever. It's been years. But I had that, I had Forgotten Realms, and one of my favorite series was, oh crap, it just literally, Spelljammer. I loved the Spelljammer uh, series. It was basically Dozen Dragons in Space. And they had released a bunch of books with all the different worlds in it, and how the worlds all functioned, how some, how basically all these different, all these different areas, like the Dragonlance world, and Forgotten Realms world, and what have you. They were all basically encased in these spheres. And there was this, like, river between all the spheres. And you could travel there in special ships that required a mage to operate the helm. 
and different weapon and how weapons in the combat system worked in space. And basically, when one of the ships uh, left the atmosphere, uh, it pulled with it a bunch of oxygen around the vessel, depending upon the size of the vessel. And all the different races had different types of ships they would use and so on. It was it was pretty awesome. I really liked it. Drink healing potion. No, Tim. Eat healing pill. Also eat a vigor pill. How are we looking? We might as well stay out here and just keep fighting. Oh, we should continue to save it in this part. And so it was it was great. Um, at that time, I also was a big fan of using miniatures, or I began to be a big fan of using miniatures. And so, I had the Heroes Quest board game. I actually, my, I bought it, I think, once or twice, and then my parents got it again for all the furniture and parts. And I was using them for everything, like my, my, my brothers would walk into a, into a store, I'd have the whole store laid out with uh, the shelves, what have you, and we came up with the rules, that, like every single hex was a ten, 10 steps for the hexes. At board, we just used a spell jammer map, uh, map space board, and my, my brothers didn't care whatsoever. And it was great. Yeah, my brother Joe had a fighter named Florida, was the, was the name of it. That's right. He took the name because uh, when we've been outside, uh, you know, as as kids as kids do, we had stop hitting me, <laughs> stupid stupid pterosaurus. Um, he was. Uh, we had used our snow sleds as shields. Oh God! This thing's killing me. I was gonna slaughter you because you're really a good number on me, Pterosaurus. We used these giant blue. Well, giant's the wrong word, but they were big enough that as a 11 or 12 year old you could lie down in one, and they had these uh, black hand grips, and they were supposed to be able to hit, fit two people, so it's about the size of us, and we used them as shields. We, uh, we took, there was this one, like, there's a ball you tie on a string, and it's around a, uh, a pole. We didn't, we never had that, but we had the ball. I don't know where we got it from. I think we might have found it in the woods. And we tied a rope around that, was using it like a, like a flail. And then we had these hockey sticks, and we would use them as swords and axes. My parents hated that we would, <laughs> that we would do this. But we would go in the yard and just whack our, the shields. We would never hit each other hard enough to cause any harm, and we knew we knew better than that. So it was all just in play. But oh my goodness, my parents were were terrified we would kill kill each other. But what I, what I would do is I would set up like a we'd be like okay from this area of the from this area of the yard to the other area that's one room, and by the time we were doing this we were in like high school or so. I guess LARPing is the proper term to use. And so, like, I would put, like, a key someplace, we'd put, like, a little box out there for a treasure chest, and so on, and I'd be all the monsters. <laughs> and it was great! Oh, we had, a, we had a grand time. And I, I was collecting gems from, like, Ren Fairs or what have you back then. And so I would put them on the ground, and they would bring them all back, we'd get gold, they level up, they'd buy better gear, and so on. It was fantastic. Really, really wonderful. I did the same thing with Legos, as well, for miniatures for, for a while. Go, Scorpion. Uh, blocking. Oh, not blocking. All right, so when it came to the other D&D books, what were, what were the books, just to give you guys a heads up in case you've never seen them? We're getting hit a lot, by the way. Holy crap! Let's just kill this thing and just end it. <laughs> yeah, we need another healing pill, because I'm, I'm not blocking or dodging anything. How are we looking? How's our stats? Oh, I just had my stats. Uh, they're not really going up very much. We, did, we just cast that, Tim. So the, the red book was for low-level characters. I think it was like from levels 1 to 4, maybe. It might have been from levels 1 to 3. The blue book series, or dark blue, is what I think I should call them. They were for levels 4 through 6. Then it was the... Oh, the black book, I think, was... Was the black book or teal book next? I think it was teal. That was from, like, level 7 to 12. The black book was from level 13 to 18, or maybe even higher, and the gold books, last of the series, were for immortals, when your characters um, were gods, and they all had special, like, power points and so on. That book was the first time I encountered any Cthulhu-esque type of creatures as well for the outer ancient gods in it. And then we moved to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which is what Spelljammer was, and um, the Dragonlance stuff and so on. Oh, I remember the old second edition book when it had a paladin fighting demons in hell on one page of it. Wow, that was a long time ago. 
Uh, th that's right, I remember the monk class being defined in it as well. It was ages ago, though. Right, how are we looking on our pills and stuff? We only have six healing pills. Let's buy some more. Alright, Tim, what else did you what else did you do? Yeah, so, so Spelljammer was fantastic. I really liked the Rock of Brawl, which was this asteroid with um, Kingdom. Kingdom might be a little wrong, but there was a castle on it. Uh, spaceport type of thing. And my brothers really liked going there because I, I did a pretty good job having all the different races there. Like, the, I think they were called the Norigi, the Ri Neogri. These, they had like spider bodies with eels, with like an eel head, something of the sort. And they had, they had slaves and umber hulks as guards. Hey, Haddock. I did not notice you come in. Okay, yes, we're just, we're talking today. We're haggle for the healing pills. Thank you, sir. How are we looking, by the way? Are we good on... Do I want anything else? We should buy some more of them. Uh, not quite yet. How's our mana pills? 12 of them? Okay, we're good. So we're all done with uh, the elementals. We're just waiting for the caravan to show up. What's some other D&D stuff we can talk about? So, me and my brother, my youngest brother, my brother Joe, we played D&D the most. My other brothers had left the house... And I was still living with them uh, during my early college years, my parents. And so we would, uh, we would just play, play D&D a lot on the weekends. It was great. It was awesome. On the weekends? No, on the weekdays after, after school. On the weekends, generally, we went, we went out. Oh, not, not me and my brother, but like I was out bike riding or taking the car to, our, to arcades or just going to parks and so on. Good day. We're just walking outside. Good, good day. I'm not taking you, Saurus, because uh, throw me off of you. Right, so then we got to college, and college is when I encountered a bunch of other people who loved playing D&D as well. And so my brother Dave had spent a summer working on this one world. I think Alestria was the name of the, pl of the planet. And we, he made a map, he made all the gods, and some of the backgrounds, and how the different races would work. And in particular, he was really proud of his orcs, because his orcs were basically shamanistic. They weren't, they weren't these green brutes that you would encounter in, um, like, in the, War, in the Warcraft games at the time. That's what the orcs, you know, orcs were just brutal, bloodlusty uh, creatures. Same thing with, like, Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. So, my brother Dave made basically what is the Warcraft 3 orcs today. At least that's what, that's what he envisioned for them. Uh, good sailors, if I recall correctly. Uh, they had their own island which had dinosaurs and what have you living on it and they were they were pretty awesome and so i took his ideas and i made a role-playing world out of it i designed a bunch of unique classes and so instead of fighter and paladin uh the races had different classes depending upon the gods that they followed and i wanted each race to have several like two, at least two gods that they that they followed or more and there were classes that based around them and so over the once he was done with his world uh, I took the world basically he made, and I just oh, I don't want to get I want to practice, but I guess probably, this is probably the worst creature to practice against him. It can insta kill you. We'll just kill it. Sorry, scorpion. What time is it? Sunset. Okay, we'll we'll stay out here till nighttime. Then we'll go back and, and sleep, and then we'll call the session. Oh wow, we made it to the Griffin place. All right, yes. So, and then when I came back to college, I was able to run a D&D campaign with my friends. Now, when I run a D&D campaign at that point, uh, things were... Actually, even in high school, I went all out with my, brother, with my brother Joe because I would make notes for him to read and find. I had a, another language, which I had a translation paper so that you could translate the words into English. I had a star chart so you could figure out where you were heading based on based on that, and so on. In D&D, you could take different proficiencies and what have you when you made your character. Like, you could take writing and reading certain languages. No one really cared about them very much, but I added stats to them. I had a leveling system where when you leveled up, you got points to put in one of your primary stats, like strength, dexterity, or something like that. And when you reach a certain level, you gain a whole new, another point in that ability. My restrictions were that no character could be godlike. In fact, I was a big fan of the you put points in abilities so, like, everyone started with an 8 in all their abilities, and then I gave them, I forget how many points it was, like 23 points or something, maybe a little less than that, to put in all your stats. But no, nothing could be over 16 through that way. You'd have, if you wanted higher than 16, you had to take non-weapon proficiencies or weapon proficiencies instead 
to increase uh, to increase your stats. There was a bunch of other stuff I, I had done second edition as well. I, I know I'm going all over the place here, but like a uh, undead. In D&D, Undead had level drain. I immediately undid that. Especially when I began realizing that as a DM, that you have complete power over your game. You can do whatever you want. And I freaking hated level drain. God, what a miserable thing to do to players. And the dungeon master. Keep track of all that garbage. So I, I made it instead that these creatures that drained your stats, and they would drain them temporarily. When it came to things like diseases, I had it such that when you were hit by a creature or poisoned, you didn't know... If you were poisoned or not, because before we began the game, I had my players uh, roll a bunch of rolls to begin with, and I would pick from those rolls without them seeing what what I picked to determine what if they resisted certain diseases or or poisons. And so, whenever they were hit by something like that, they knew that if they the way it worked in, in my campaign is that if you used a like, if you got a Cure Disease spell, that would prevent the disease from happening. If you got the full-fledged disease, the Cure Disease spell might not work on you. We'll, talk, we'll have to talk more about this later. Um, like, uh, this, this Dungeons and Dragons would have you. Wow, I've actually talked for quite a bit about it. We'll talk about it more in the next episode. Because uh, we're, we're going to be ending in a few, more min a few more seconds from now. But yeah, so they would go, they would go nuts. They would, they'd be like, did we resist the disease? I wouldn't tell them. And I, but I would describe the disease to them, what would happen, because I had a whole chart full of diseases. And they would always always spend all the money to get to have the potions that would cure diseases or antidotes and stuff like that. They would always make sure they had some of them with them, just in case, because they didn't want to take the risk. It was wonderful. Oh, I remember one time uh, before they had any of that, uh, Chris, who you've heard here on this channel, uh, his elf got... It, uh, infected his leg was right leg with um, it's called limb rot and he wasn't able to uh, it was, so it was spreading throughout his system he was going to die in like another two weeks but they made it back but he wasn't able to to walk very well he had all sorts of combat penalties and so on I had all it was wonderful all these awesome diseases that that would hit, that would hurt them welcome hero hello Shamin I'll, I'll talk more about this later. It was, oh, it was grand, though. I especially liked all, all the work I did with all the little papers and maps. It's a good thing that you are around to save us, Galvin. Ah, thanks, Abdullah. How are we looking on everything? Let's order some food. We'll eat dinner, go to bed, and then we'll call the session here. Hello, Shema. I prepared a meal rabbit with apricots and roast chicken with sherbet for this night's meal. May it bring you pleasure. Oh, thank you, Shema. Abdullah really likes his chicken. Or mutton, whatever it is he's eating here. Or lamb? Lamb. Oh, maybe it's Saurus he's drinking. Well, we're going to call this session here, everyone. So thank you guys for watching. We come back. There's not much to do, everyone. We're, we're basically kind of done. So we'll just do more of what we did today. Although I think one or two people will want to talk to us tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day before the day before we're leaving here for... Shapir. The Entrentress Aziza sends you this message of gratitude and requests that you visit her home tomorrow. It is said that Uhura at the Guild Hall has a message for you as well. Oh, good morning, Shamin. We are most honored by your presence at our inn, Hero Spielberg. All right, thank you. All right, everyone. Well, I'm going to call a session here. Thank you guys for watching. When we come back, we'll do more Quest for Glory. I'll see you guys then. Take care, everyone.